So, worries are everywhere, that we know, particularly about Europe, but perhaps also for China, too. Joining us now is Pio Yonghao, Chief Investment Strategist for Asia Pacific at UBS Wealth Management. Many thanks for coming in, Pew. Good morning, morning. yeah. John. Um, you know, every week there is a different concern, but it just seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the only drip feed, I call it, is the pumping of money. Without that, there would be a, you know, a huge collapse in the markets. Yeah. Where do you see this all heading out to? Because you mentioned that obviously Europe has its concerns, but for your research, it's the contagion and the precedent set if Greece is allowed to leave the euro, but also it's the Chinese hard landing now. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Europe uh, right now is the number one concern. Although uh, we are uh, not expecting Greece to exit uh, as uh, our base case, but uh, the probability of Greece leaving the eurozone is increased but it's not our base case yet. I still would expect that the uh, uh, European leaders, politicians, to come up with some solutions to at least to stop the contagion, increase or increase or strengthening the firewall to make sure the contagion stop somewhere, not uh, spreading to the other countries. In China, I think it's a deceleration. Government uh, is aware of this deceleration. They want to control the asset bubble and so on, inflation. That's why this is a consequence of this kind of austerity measure. But I wouldn't expect the kind of hard landing. Government is coming up with some measures to sort of stimulate domestic demand, home, home appliance subsidies. Probably is going to launch more infrastructure related project, which is going to support the economic growth in the coming quarters. Here we can see markets today selling off for the week, yeah, yeah. for the day, yeah. and erasing gains for the entire year. Yeah. Two indexes, or indices rather, one is the VIX, the volatility, as you yeah. know, the fear index, which has yeah. been rising steadily, yeah. gradually, in fact, until yeah. significantly. That's a big concern. And with that, the dollar index as well, 15 days in a row. There on the screen for you is the yeah. VIX. Look at that. Gradually steeping out. That's the measure of fear. And the dollar index, you can argue, is a measure of the safe haven. So that's, there it is, up next again. Those two together, what does that tell you as an investor? and tell your clients how worried should we be about the markets? Well, I mean, it looks like that the, if you look at the correlation between the risky assets recently has been risen, which means the, the risk of trade become more dominating in the last couple of weeks because concern of Europe and, and also in the China. U.S. economic number is positive, but in the last couple of days we also see mixture of the numbers. So on whole, I think this market will continue concern particularly on the Europe. I mean, obviously, what we advise our clients, stay diversified, because at least the, the fixed income, investment grade bond, are benefiting from this kind of environment, while the equity is taking big hit. But if you look at the valuation of the equity market, they are close to the low of last October. We see it's trading, for example, Asia trading at the close to the 1.4 price to book. It's very low. Of course, if you use the benchmark for 2008, then another 20% downside. I hope that the European leader will come up with a solution to stop this kind of the fear. On that European leader, is it a bigger concern for you, the contagion and the press set by Greece? Or, you mentioned before the Chinese data, I've got a comment here from uh, uh, Tsinhua overnight that uh, Chinese companies, and I quote that news agency, have alarming levels of debt, most of which is being held by the banks with the data they've seen recently from China, which one should we be worrying about more? We know about the Greece scenario, we don't know about the actuality of what's happening in China. Yeah. In China's case, yes, I think the local government does have a lot of the high debt. The, the lucky part is the state still have enough of resources. If you look at the tax revenue last year, they increased twice faster than GDP. So in a sense, the state is in good shape to recapitalize some banks, injecting capitals, and helping the local government. The key issue is that in the future, make sure the local government do not overly spend their money and so on. They need it under control. I wouldn't worry too much as long as the government is aware of the situation and take control of it in the future. Final question for you. The clients are calling you up and they're saying, Pew, which asset class do we invest in for the next two months? Well, next two months, I would ask investors to stay for probably increase the weight on the like fixed income, 
emerging emerging uh, market government bond, which tend to be defensive. On the dollar side, I think we like dollar and sterling, which is tend to be defensive as well. Of course, the equity market look like is getting increasing, look like they need to get more bargains in the, the next two to three months, which uh, for the long-term investor, I think is a great time to look at those quality companies being overly sold. Pete Byung-Han, many thanks for braving the rain and coming in to talk to us this morning. Chief APAC Investment Strategist at UBS Wealth Management. Pete, many thanks indeed for coming in.